both actors and use cases or both discovery of actors and use cases are very heavily related to the process of analyzing the system. So what can we rely on uh, knowing about this importance? Well, first, the collection of all use cases specifies the total system functionality. So of course, if we need to make a decision on the system design, we have to identify the use cases. So let's say that we decided that we're going to have a number of use cases, at least a few of them to begin with. And we say this is going to be our system. So normally you box these bubbles in and this is your system. We can even describe what the system is. So as we move along, we begin to uh, discover actors and uh, these actors uh, are allowed to interact with specific use cases. So the actor typically will perform several of these use cases in the system. And uh, use cases can be identified. We can discover this new use case because we realize that this actor also need this use case. So prior to this, we may not, not, not even know uh, or did not identify it as a separate use case, thinking that maybe it's part of something else. Right? So discovery of use case can be done through a specific role of a user. In other words, the, uh, the actor. And vice versa, when we, uh, do, uh, when we discuss a specific use case and uh, talk about its steps, its scenario, we may discover that it has another actor right here. So there's some kind of maybe administrator that has to be able to get access to this use case. In overall, you can never make this in like one uh, straight uh, top-down approach. This is a highly interactive uh, process, a very incremental analysis type of the system functionality. And we already talked a little bit about identifying use cases through actors. So, because really, together, all the use cases represent the functionality of the entire system. So the following questions can be asked to identify the use cases. What are the main tasks of a specific actor? Does the actor need access to any system information? Does the actor have to inform the system about any changes in the environment? So all of these little things kind of help to unveil uh, what are parts of the system requirements that we have to be working on, that we have to gather as the scenario for a specific use case and realize which use cases we need. Also, does the actor need to be informed about un unexpected events in the system? Okay, so these are all correspond to various types of interfaces, direct and indirect, such as, you know, user clicking on the screen or system sending an email uh, to a bunch of users as a result of some sort of event in the system. At this point, I would like to switch to this uh, business requirements study, uh, airline reservation system, which we have a, as part of our uh, set of topics um, uh, that we're currently trying to discuss. And so airline reservation system right here is, of course, an example of a business requirement document. So this is a set of business requirements that essentially tell us that uh, the software system, um, typically you start with the name of the software system and then the description, description here follows that says that the, this software system is developed to support seat reservation and ticketing for an airline. So we start with business requirements. And our goal is to be able to identify, I would definitely focus on identification of use cases, identification of actors, basically the uh, users of the system playing certain roles when interacting with the system. Also objects, what kind of objects the system could rely on. So there would be some obvious, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, possibilities. Uh, then also possibly data attributes. 
and also database entities. So database entities are also known as records, permanent records um, that we want to uh, store in the database. So these records are made up of uh, a collection of fields, collection of information like customer name, customer phone number, address, um, and uh, something else specific to this customer. So that would, could be stored as a single record. So that's very helpful in understanding of the entire business requirement. And you see that on top here, not necessarily in this order, but in some order, I would like to go over this material and be able to fill in uh, my discovery about use cases, actors, objects, and so forth. So this software system is developed to support seat reservation and ticketing for an airline. So clearly an airline could be an object which represents uh, the airline entity. Uh, ticketing um, is probably some sort of use case, but we, at this stage we probably need more information. I would say that reservation is very likely to be an object in the system. right? So reservation, um, uh, completed uh, reservation uh, represents a transaction between some sort of actor and the system. So then we go to describe what the system is supposed to do. So this is very friendly document that goes over all of these business requirements. Keep track of reservation. So I already predicted that reservation will be an object in our system. Keep track of reservations and ticket sales for flights to various destinations. So ticket sale and reservation sounding like something very similar, but I would like to take ticket sale and uh, for now d I decide to maybe keep, uh, keep it as a possible candidate for an object. So I don't know yet if this is going to materialize into a real object. Maybe it will be uh, part of the reservation, but yet um, I, I am yet to discover all the business rules. So I'm just want to keep an eye on these things. Flight, of course, is a def definitely an, an example of an object. Uh, flights to various destinations. So destination is probably just a data attribute describing the flight. So there's a departure information, destination information, and other uh, information about the flight. Support boarding of flights. So this is definitely a contribution to the use case uh, list. So board flight, I think that is um, board flight. I'll just rephrase it to, to simply say board flight. So notice that my use case name is a verb phrase, board flight, do something. Okay, so that's the idea of properly naming your use cases. It's very important. Naming of your use cases should not be made up of nouns, but rather they should sound like commands, like actions, like functions, like verb phrases. Do something. Okay. Support waiting list for each flight. So waiting list uh, in itself, apparently, uh, is an object. I would say that this is, this is an object in the system. So the responsibility of a waiting list is essentially monitor uh, the you know potential uh, potential reservations. So once um, you know, like if if we begin uh, w working on making reservation, uh, perhaps so uh, as we started with the with an idea of reservation, how about we put another uh, use case uh, over here to say uh, s uh, make reservation. Right, make a reservation is a use case, obviously. So in this use case, I'm suspecting make reservation. It's possible that first, even before we decided that we want to create this reservation, we want to enter, for instance, customer information and put them on the waiting list as we process this reservation. And then upon successful processing, uh, the customer could be taken off the waiting list and the reservation can be committed. 
and a ticket sale could also be generated. So ideas like this. But so far, this is how, how am I doing with the, with the, the list of use cases and the, the objects. Now, did I miss any actors? I don't know. I can always com come back and, and read this again. Uh, waiting list should be FIFO, first in, first out. So basically, the idea is the earliest customer who has gotten on the waiting list is going to get the 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 reservation in the first priority. So um, also, uh, there's this uh, for up to ten percent of airline capacity. All of these things will become detailed business rules um, inserted or or put as as steps inside the actual use case description. So remember, each use case that we we identify, we will we are going to expand by explaining what is the actual use case scenario of of the of the steps involving in making reservation or boarding the flight. Now I'm thinking that uh, who could be the actor, uh, the user of a uh, board flight use case. I would say that uh, this should be some sort of airline uh, stuff, right? Airline staff. So someone who is authorized to board passengers. Basically, passengers show up with boarding passes and the airline staff can execute board flight. So once the, the board flight is, um, is uh, complete, uh, use case is complete, we have a passenger. So the outcome of that use case is that we now have, uh, we, ha we now can safely put the, the customer or group of customers on the list of passengers. So anyway, waiting list uh, shall be FIFO. I would say that this is also uh, a, a part of the... Uh, this doesn't contribute to, to any new objects or actors or use cases. This is just detailed information about uh, the making reservation use case. So this is just another, another uh, uh, business rule. Cancellation of a confirmed reservation shall result in an automatic assignment. Uh, so let's say uh, cancellation, uh, cancel reservation. That would be another make reservation and then cancel reservation would definitely be. Uh, how about we keep cancel confirmed reservation right? just to be as descriptive as possible. So once again, a verb phrase, uh, cancel confirmed reservation. And then we go to the second part of the sentence that says uh, cancellation should result in an automatic assignment of the seat to the first passenger on, on the waiting list. And so we can um, try to put this as another use case, I think. We can say assign uh, seat, right? We can um, uh, assign seat and therefore this is um, uh, this is um, equal, I think, to confirming confirm reservation. Right? So the actual seat assignment uh, results in a definitely confirmed reservation. And uh, then we could also potentially. Uh, use a waiting list as um, also one of the uh, targets of uh, use case such as put on waiting list or we could say add to add to waiting list and remove from waiting list. Now, this is not totally confirmed list of use cases, but I think that the, those uh, those potentially could be very good candidates to be 
uh, confirmed as the, the list of the, the use cases that we may need in the system. Now, if we look at uh, the, um, the process of making a reservation, let's just assume that this could be a, a, a done online, but this could also be done through a ticketing agent. Okay, so we have an, a ticketing agent, agent directly at the airport. Uh, this could be uh, <clears throat> this uh, this actor uh, could be uh, making the reservation. Now it says support airlines of various types, with the assumption that the number of seats in a row for a single airplane type is constant. The number of rows. Uh, and the number of seats in a row defines an airline uh, airplane type. So there's some some more information about the actual um, uh, flight information. I suppose that when the flight is scheduled, uh, there is a there is a potentially uh, an aircraft uh, type of object where all the sitting you know sit, sitting maps are defined. And therefore, we can use this information uh, during the seat assignment, I suppose. So once again, uh, good information for putting it together as a as a as a set of business rules implemented in the code, where we begin to understand how we define an aircraft.